In today's show, let's talk about how your muscle is an endocrine organ that responds to exercise, releasing a myriad of different proteins and gene products that favor your immune system, metabolic health, mitochondrial function, and more. But we're going to focus on and what this study talked about and analyzed is the muscle proteomic and genomic secretory products from different types of athletes. Now, I think this is really important because what they found is that about 92% of the proteins that are released from skeletal muscle in athletes who had been training from an for endurance events for over 15 years versus strength athletes who had been training consistently for 15 years compared to sedentary controls. There were over 6,000 proteins that were different uh, in the muscle, which I think is just phenomenal. So this goes to show, again, this is something I, I talk about a lot when I travel and give these talks. I was just in Denmark, Copenhagen, uh, and I'm going to Santiago, Chile next week to give a similar presentation. Um, it turns out that your muscle is an organ, just like your thyroid, just like your pancreas, just like your liver. But you need to stimulate this organ through exercise. Your, your, your muscle depends upon movement to release these beneficial stimulatory uh, products and to affect the mitochondria and the genes and the, the gene uh, transcripts. Now, the key take home here is there were over 650 different proteins that were released from endurance trained athletes compared to healthy controls, meaning that lifelong exercisers, their muscle literally is a protein secretory organ that signals to the rest of the body, decreasing the risk of cancer, decreasing inflammatory state, and improving the activity of mitochondria, which are so important for cognitive function, for cardiovascular function, for exercise performance, for the immune system, and beyond. So this is really, I think, a fascinating study. Uh, we're going to dive into it, but first, friends, I just want to say thank you for being here. I, I hope you're enjoying the content. If you are, please hit that like button. And I want to thank this video show sponsor, our folks over at bondcharge.com, the makers of some amazing health tools, including these blue light blocking glasses, but they have an awesome at-home sauna blanket. It's one of the hottest yet lowest EMF sauna blankets on the market. It gets up to 170 degrees. You can roll this out when you travel. You can bring it to your grandma's house for Thanksgiving, or you can just put it in your studio or your condo if you don't have room for a bigger sauna or an infrared sauna. I love the sauna blanket. It makes you sweat. It's a great way to actually recover uh, from exercise. And what I think is really important as the winter comes on, it's sometimes the nights are long, to relax, to calm down, to de-stress. So you can save by going to bondcharge.com for slash H-I-H on their amazing sauna blanket. Again, the hottest sauna blanket out there with the the lowest amount of EMFs. Go to bondcharge.com for slash H-I-H. So getting back to the study, really interesting study. I would encourage you to download it. This was uh, in co collaboration with researchers at UC San Diego, as well as um, folks out of Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, the title here is Remodeling of Human Skeletal Muscle Proteum Found After Long-Term Endurance Training, But Not After Strength Training. Now, admittedly, I'm biased because I love strength training and I encourage a lot of you to strength train. But it turns out the investigators did muscle biopsies of the quadricep muscles, which if people don't strength train their legs heavily enough, maybe that could have uh, influenced the outcomes and the differences in the protein products that were found compared to sedentary controls, endurance trained athletes for 15 years or strength trained athletes of 15 years experience. But that being said, it turned out that when you compare the muscle proteome, and this is the, these are the types of proteins that are released from the muscle, endurance trained athletes tend to release a significant higher quantity of proteins from their skeletal muscle. Now you can see in part F of this figure, the uh, statistical analysis and the increase in specific proteins. 92% of these proteins were related to mitochondrial function. 92%. Now, this is really important because there's a lot of people that are spending tons of money every month on NAD precursors and urethrin A and so forth. It turns out that if you want to help your mitochondria beyond just coenzyme Q10 and urethrin A and so forth, you should exercise. You should be exercising anyway. There are so many benefits from reducing blood pressure, reducing post meal glucose, improving stress response, improving sleep pressure. I mean, the list goes on, uh, fat oxidation and, and so forth. But Again, we're talking about over 650 different enzymes are released from skeletal muscle when you compare endurance trained athletes to sedentary controls. Now, there also was a difference with the strength trained athletes. They do release significantly uh, more proteins from their skeletal muscle compared to sedentary controls, but 
the highest concentrations were found in endurance trained athletes. So what does that mean? I think a hybrid approach is good when it comes to exercise, doing strength training along with cardio and endurance based training. And so that's just what I personally do. That's what I recommend. You know, we've talked about other studies that have found that if you do cardio, you run, you walk, you do mountain biking, you do hiking, pickleball, you name it, whatever the exercise, you know, that you really like to do. When you pair that with resistance training, you actually get better hypertrophy. And it, it might be because the skeletal muscle is getting an, a surge of new blood vessels, capillary density, mitochondrial function, so that you can deliver nutrients like amino acids, like creatine, like branched chain amino acids, proteins to the skeletal muscle to help with hypertrophy uh, and also get waste products away. So it turns out that both types of exercise have their specific health benefits. But again, I'm biased. If you're short on time, do a combination, right? Do strength training and just do supersets, right? So you could do, you know, some chest presses, some push-ups, and do pull-ups, and then maybe some arm curls, go back to chest press, right? You could do squats and then you could do some hip hinges. You can superset um, and do drop sets and, and things like that to really get the cardiovascular benefits, the hybrid approach, but also the strength training aspect as well. So what are your thoughts, my friends? I really hope you enjoyed that content. Please hit that like button. Let me know what you think in the comment section and we'll catch you on a future video down the road.